Hello and welcome to CNCF Minutes. In this video, we'll be talking about Container D. Now, Container D is a CNCF uh, graduated project, and uh, let's go by its official definition. So, we'll not be covering the complete deep dive, obviously. This will be just an overview of what Container D actually is and where it is as of today. So Container D uh, is available as a daemon for Linux and Windows. It manages the complete container life cycle uh, of its host system from image transfer and uh, storage to container execution and supervision to low level storage to network attachments and beyond. So basically a complete uh, package for the container life cycle. So let's try to break it down and understand uh, with the help of some history. So, so it started with a branch a specific branch where docker uh, you know pulled its container d piece out and put it uh, as a separate kind of project where more people can collaborate and make uh, it uh, better so how the container actually runs is you have docker so docker passes the request to container d container d then passes the request to run c which is actually running the uh, containers by having the all the namespaces and all that stuff uh, interacting with your operating system so it sits between docker and run c so there is a higher level um, container uh, higher level which is docker there's low level uh, container uh, which is uh, container runtime which is uh, run c and now the container d was sitting uh, between that so it was the runtime manager uh, but now uh, the kubernetes adoption was increasing and uh, the uh, docker was moving towards uh, docker swarm uh, docker was uh, moving with its own set of features and enhancements uh, more oriented towards docker swarm so it became kind of uh, difficult for the kubernetes community to adopt everything and also they started working on then uh, cri so cri is uh, to plug other container runtimes with kubernetes because it, it it's a valid choice, right? Uh, so you should be having your own CRI uh, that you can plug with your Kubernetes architecture uh, rather than Docker because Docker has uh, more number of features that probably you won't need with respect to Kubernetes. So container D started to, to become more mature at that point of time. So this point of time, it is fully contained, which means uh, it can do the image pull, push, task management, etc. Uh, OCI support, plugin-based architecture. We'll go through the architecture as well. With Containerd 1.0, the CRI implementation uh, moved to alpha and the API moved towards stabilization. So Containerd has always been in such phase, like its its core has been completely stable. We'll we'll see what the core is. So the core is you know uh, it's it's not that much tangible. So you cannot change very often the core. The core remains very much uh, focused, stable, and it's hundred percent kind of maintainers. Uh, vote required if any changes have to be made to the core so that's how uh, you know uh, stable it is and as of 1.5 uh, the container d plugin for k8 cri is merged uh, into the container d main branch there has been a lot of usage uh, with respect to container d uh, like the build kit underneath uses container d k3s under the hood uses container d fast d with function as a service uses container d kubernetes under the hood uh, you can you use uh, container d major use cases and docker under the hood is using container d then kind is using container d kata containers pouch and many more so you can see the production use cases of container d that's because it is kind of uh, with its flexible architecture the api uh, you know the set of apis and services that it provide that can be easily consumed to leverage specific pieces of the architecture uh, of container d since Kubernetes version 1.220, there came an announcement that uh, they'll be deprecating Docker shim, which 1.23, uh, it will be completely deprecated. So the first release uh, where the Docker shim won't be there would be 1.23. And that has even increased more adoption of container D. And even the major managed cloud services uh, have their default container uh, backend container runtime as container D. So container D is a resource manager, uh, which is managing the container processes, image, snapshots, container metadata, and its dependencies. Feature wise, I think we have covered most of them, but uh, we can see like OCI image spec support, image pull and push, uh, OCI uh, runtime uh, spec support, which is uh, run C. But actually, the with the help of shim, uh, the other uh, runtimes, low level container runtimes can also implement container D like the Kata container, GYZ container runtime and lifecycle support, and then all the other features. Uh, let's see on a very high level how the architecture uh, looks like so overall the architecture is kind of divided so this this portion this particular portion is the container daemon and this is uh, the con 
container D go client. So you have uh, the container D go client where the container logic is there and the client is basically communicating via the go library which is in turn calling the apis uh, so you can see uh, that you have uh, k3s or kubelet which is calling the container runtime so kubelet says hey um, uh, container d run a pod so that's how it is used then you have uh, container engines like um, docker is there and pouch is there which internally whenever you run uh, docker run uh, command uh, so it will be giving you it will be giving the uh, grpc request to container d so everything is grpc based and it's the grpc services that are getting called uh, you also have ctr so as a as a client like uh, as for the developers uh, you know developers tooling uh, you can use uh, docker obviously you'll be using docker or build kit and things like that but ctr is only for the testing and debug purposes and not as a full fledged uh, build system uh, with respect to the development of the uh, containers. Then comes the core. So that's that's where I was telling you that the core is pretty stable. Uh, core is a set of services and each of the component is kind of pluggable. Now, what do I mean when I say that it's pluggable? All services can be used by themselves and you can have your own implementation. So all these things are uh, kind of pluggable. Yeah, you, you can bring bring your own uh, snapshot. You can you can have uh, the kind of container D shim which can be used uh, with your run C or it the basically the beneath uh, container D can be your run C or Kata, Firecracker, Gvisor, and also you can have the uh, your own choice of snapshotter. So these are the list, but you can have your own implementation. So people use it in different ways. Uh, some use it directly, some have their own implementation, some likes one feature, uh, like say they, they, they like the content service, but they do not want to use the content one, they, they want to use their own content one. So in this way, uh, people, uh, you know, people can write a library that uses a small piece of container D, but not the entire daemon. So you can actually use small pieces from the services because that that's how container D is built. So seeing seeing it may not look like it is simple but it is built in such a way that consuming container d is pretty simple and then you have shim which is interacting with the lower level container runtimes and user wise basically everybody uh, kind of interacts with the client it can be your uh, docker or a kubelet directly uh, talking to cri or your k3s when you are running uh, the pods they are directly in built the single process talking to uh, the container d so that's how it works kind of pluggable architecture core becoming the stable and you have your uh, go client which uh, can be called by the uh, go code and uh, which is internally calling all the apis uh, grpc services uh, backend uh, and everything is a pluggable architecture and on the platform level i have told like uh, you know docker or cloud vendors they have their own managed services which also have container d as the backend so that's a very high level that container d you know how it looks like so I can actually show you uh, the CTR command because it ships with K3S. So I just have pulled a K3S. Uh, so it's a K3S cluster is already running. And what I do is now K3S CTR images pull. I'm trying to pull Nginx. So it is pulling the Nginx, Nginx image and unpacking that. I can also do images LS prep Nginx. And then we can run a container as well. So the container is running and if I do LS, you can see I'm inside the container. So like this, yes, you can do some of the tasks, but it is not that much, uh, you know, the developer experience is not that much good with CTR. So you can use a high level uh, tooling for that, a mature tooling like Docker for running this. So that's what container D is on a very high level. If you want a deep dive, uh, then probably uh, you can put that in the comment and uh, we can do a deep dive session on container D. Uh, so if you like the video, uh, then please like, share and subscribe uh, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. This video, this CNCF video is actually sponsored by Teleport. So thank you to them and uh, do visit Teleport at sayampatak.com slash Teleport. Uh, also, I have created a couple of videos on Teleport, which are linked in the description. So do check them out. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one.